Joining us is the Archbishop uh, Jackson Olesa Pitt. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Your Grace. And uh, uh, we know that you've traveled a long trip from uh, Butera yesterday. Karibu sana, and thank you for speaking to us. Asante uh, sana, thank you so much. Thank you. I think on behalf of everybody, let's first of all congratulate you and the diocesans of Butere for this big thing that they did, electing a woman to be their bishop. That's a very good thing, and I'm sure you have one or two words to say on that. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, let me put a, a record straight. She's the second woman we consecrated as the Anglican Church of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did the first one in the month of March, but that one was appointed as an assistant bishop. It was not through an election. Yes. But uh, uh, Right Reverend Rose uh, Okeno uh, is the first woman to face an election, and she won an election and therefore become the first also diocesan bishop because she's not going to be deputy to anybody in that diocese. Mm. She is the diocesan bishop. Mm. Okay. And, and we really want to thank God for the opportunity uh, that uh, yeah, uh, women can also serve in, in the church, in the, uh, the, the, the various orders that uh, in the Anglican Church we talk of the three order of holy ministry, which is deacons, uh, priests, and bishops. Mm -hmm. They have been in the order of priests and, 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 and uh, deacons and priests for a long, long time. Mm. But this is the first time now they have made an entry to the house of bishops and to, to get to that, that order of the order of bishops. A very mm. good thing, and congratulations to the Right Reverend Rosa Keno. Thank you. Now, Archbishop, yesterday during that event, it was a big one. It was even being televised for very mm. many reasons. One of them being this first it's a milestone that the Anglican Church of Kenya has reached. And then you spoke, and as you were speaking, you said a couple of things. One, you said that you want to repeat what you've been saying, not wanting yes. to allow politics to mix into church service yes now those that did not watch what you were saying what exactly were you saying were you saying that you do not want to allow people who are not part of clergy to speak during service uh what exactly we mean is that uh you know church is open for everybody let me begin from there mm. that the church it welcomes everybody and we open churches for everybody uh, people of all walks of life, people uh, who, who are considered and consider themselves as sinners, they are all invited to the church because that is a healing place. Mm -hmm. But in the church, we have two sections. We have the pews where everybody comes to sit to listen to the word of God, which is for everybody. And then we have the pulpit where the ministers are appointed to preach, who are trained to preach, who are called to preach. Uh, are the ones who are going to man that space mm -hmm. and pray over people and speak the word of God. And what I said yesterday is that uh, we welcome everybody to come and worship with us, but we are not going to allow people to take the pulpit uh, space, which is for clergy and those who are teaching the word and those who have been called uh, to do ministry, to, to, to occupy that space mm -hmm. and then speak politics and uh, uh, express hate speech and, 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 and continue to divide the community using the church platform. That is what I said. We cannot mix these two. Mm. Your grace. Because the sole purpose mm. of the church is to worship mm. and not do politics. And that's what we want to, to, to do. For purposes of clarity, Your Grace, one question that has been asked by many people is, uh, you know, what harm does it do? If you have politicians coming in to address uh, the congregation and saying a word or two, from what you said just now, what harm does it actually uh, portend? Uh, what, what I said yesterday is, you know, when a politician comes and there was a sermon uh, preached that day and there was a prayer said, uh, even to you media guys, you don't air the sermon, you don't air the word of God preached, you only air what the politician said. Mm. So that at the end of the day, people watching that service that day will only see politics and not church service and not worship and not the word. Mm. So, so what I'm saying is uh, 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 what politicians also come to say is not uh, spiritually edifying. And then anybody who speaks in the church, either to give a testimony or to sing a song or to offer prayer or to teach or to preach, mm. must be spiritually edifying because that is what people came for. Uh, when they came to church, they came to be edified spiritually. Mm. So the kind of rhetoric we hear from politicians who come and take the podium and take the mic is, is not anything spiritually edifying. 
it is it is hitting on their opponents it is uh, hitting on these others and uh, 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 and, and, and you, people are left more even divided and they are left hungry because what somebody at home who was, might be watching that service will see is not the word of god preached is not a prayer offered it is a political statement made in the church mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we say we are saying let the church be the church the worship hour be the worship hour if you want to address people, go and wait for them outside. Or if you, if you want to address, make your own baraza, call it for, for, for it, and then make your political statement at that point because that is the right place to, for you to make your political statement and articulate what you want to tell people. Mm -hmm. But in the church, people came to be edified spiritually, and we want that to remain that we are here to be edified spiritually. Mm -hmm. But then, Archbishop, yeah. there are those that say that the church leaders are duplicitous. On the one hand, you do not want to allow the politicians to come and speak, while on the other hand, you want them to participate and contribute uh, handsomely to church projects. And in those days, okay. when you have church harambees and this person is the guest of honor, you will allow them even to come and sit up there on the pulpit. Yes, I uh, that is a, the, 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 the problem. I, I own it. Uh, the churches have entertained that for quite some time. You know, we all entered the Kenyan spirit of Harambe's, and it became a culture of Kenyans that mm -hmm. when somebody is sick, they will fundraise. When a school is built, they will fundraise. When a dispensary is built, they fundraise. And then also churches followed suit. When a church is built, people come to fundraise. But what we are saying now, through those fundraising, we have handed over the pulpit to the politician. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to correct in the Anglican Church of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes, a mistake has happened and I own it 100% that we have been on a mistake, but we can't remain in the same mistake for long. Mm. Uh, a moment of repentance, a moment of a turnaround uh, is, is needed and is here, and I've just made that declaration. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to make uh, another declaration this Sunday that, uh, you know, uh, I've seen a trend developing that uh, uh, always uh, an announcement is made of uh, what is called grassroots and religious leaders have gone to some politician home to be advised on what to do. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say the Anglican clergy and our bishops should not be part of these uh, trooping uh, groups mm -hmm. who are always classified as religious leaders and grassroots leaders. We should be busy preaching the word of God. We should be mobilizing people and make our churches centers of vaccination. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be mobilizing people to come to be vaccinated of COVID because we are a church that must uh, endear people to where life is, not where life is lost. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to uh, make a rejoice that uh, not only politicians are not allowed to speak in churches, but I'm also going to bar our clergy and our bishops from joining what they are, they are calling grassroots leaders to make uh, uh, trips to political uh, politicians' homes. Let us be busy doing God's work. Mm. Your grace, you have ventured into politics and now you are playing politics if I may say so. When you bar the clergy and who are opinion leaders in a community from participating with other members of the community in seeking guidance and leadership, aren't you basically interfering with their own rights? No, uh, I'm, I did not talk about opinion leaders. I'm talking of clergy. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm clergy not are opinion leaders. leaders. They, they can be opinion leaders in that respect, but you know, when we are, we are going to make uh, you know, political trips, that is not going to add to the life of the church. So, so the life of the church must be left to our vocation. You know, when I'm called as, as a bishop and the clergy is called as a clergy, we take it as a vocation. Mm -hmm. And we must separate uh, me undertaking that which resonates with my vocation yeah. or abdicating my vocation and get into other things that are not going to add to my vocation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So how... Uh, uh, you had previously sent out this message. This didn't, we know this has come from you before these things actually hot, uh, got, got a lot hotter than they, they previously were. Mm. Now, mm. who have you been um, addressing directly, Your Grace? Has it been members of the clergy of the Anglican Church? Or was this message directly to politicians? Is it that don't allow them into church to make, allow them into church, but don't allow them to make these statements during service? Or has it been to politicians? Even as you come here, please realize that this is holy ground, or is it a double message? Uh, actually, I am uh, addressing to both. Mm. 
because it, it takes both to make what happen happens. Actually, what we have seen happening happen. Mm. Because it is a clergy who normally invite and hand over the microphone mm. in, in, in the name of a, a, an important visitor, a guest has come to the church, he has to address people, uh, I come here to, to, to greet, and then you don't control what they say. Mm. Then he, uh, I'm also addressing politicians that when you come, don't expect us to be giving you the space mm. because the only space available is for you to sit in the pews and listen the word of God and be nourished like everybody else who has come so mm. that we don't mix up uh, the worship hour, which is for spiritual nourishment, uh, with a, a, a political uh, 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 rally that people are going to make political statements. Let us, let us not collapse that boundary because... What we have seen of late in our nation is that we have collapsed our boundaries. We no longer have a boundary between this and that. It is like everything is a mixture and we are getting into more confusion. Hmm. Your Grace, the issue so, of... So, of and I'm, I'm only talking to the Anglican uh, clergy because, uh, and uh, the Anglican churches because that's where I have jurisdiction over. Right. I'm not talking over any other denomination. Their heads can be able to make their statements the way they wish. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm making this statement as a head of the Anglican church and I want to salvage the Anglican Church to be a place of worship, mm -hmm. not a place of other things. Sure. The issue of money and offering and contributions also has come in that, you know, if politicians are coming in and making generous donations to church, generous donations to, you know, the establishment of church initiatives, then they should also be given a platform. What would be your comment about that? Uh, let me begin by saying it is biblical to give and to be generous and to support the course of ministry. Uh, actually, it has existed all the ages and throughout the ages uh, that we have been called to come to the house of the Lord, not with empty hands, but uh, to come to, ha to the house of the Lord, giving our, our tithe, giving our, uh, our, our sadaka, uh, and, 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 and supporting the work of ministry uh, for, for that sense. Mm. We are also constructing churches. They need, they, we need money. We are constructing a, a, a running Bible schools and running other institutions that re need resources. But let me say this. I, I said earlier on, uh, uh, maybe two or three years ago, that uh, this culture of uh, uh, coming to announce how much money you have given so that we see how generous one is, mm. is not biblical. And you know, Jesus stood in the, temp uh, in the temple uh, and saw people give and he applauded a lady who gave the list. Mm. And she said, it is this lady who has given because she has given her very all. Yeah. Uh, and then Jesus teaches us also, you know, when you are giving to, to the work of ministry, uh, let your left hand, does not, should not even know what your right, right hands have given. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I said, you know, if you are to give, come and give quietly. Mm. It, it, it doesn't have to be a ceremony and something to, which must be announced. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the more we announce, uh, we take credit uh, and, and God is not honored. But mm. the more we give quietly, God is honored and we receive our blessings. Mm. Archbishop, this is not the first time that you've spoken about this. Um, I remember yes. even last year you released a similar uh, statement talking about contributions in church and then later also talking about allowing political leaders to take space on the pulpit. However, we see it continue to happen. As the prelate of the Anglican Church of Kenya, what powers do you have to make sure that those under you, the bishops and uh, the reverends, are able to follow these instructions? Um, normally, uh, the way our church is led is that uh, it is led through not, not so much by you know enforcing a law or policing people or uh, I, I have to police what every bishop and every pastor does mm. but we lead the church by giving direction in this direction i'm giving mm. and 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 we give it through pastoral letters we give it through a, a synod resolution when we meet as a synod then we make a resolution that becomes binding and we all agree to that mm -hmm. So, so what I'm saying is, as a leader, I will not be quiet whether people follow or not follow. I must give direction. I must provide leadership. Sure. Still, and again, that's what I've done, uh, and that's what I'll, I'll continue to do. Uh, but as to ensure every bishop follows, uh, we will ensure in our House of Bishops meeting, we have what is called, although we are autonomous in our dioceses and we, we don't want to police anybody, but we have what we call collegiality mm. uh, of, 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 of bishops or leadership, that when we agree, we agree and we follow. Mm -hmm. 
And I really want to thank God. Yesterday when I made the statement, I have over 20 bishops with me, and they are all in agreement. In our wall, uh, House of Bishops, uh, they, they, they are all in agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are beginning to write to their clergy, mm -hmm. even as early as today, this week, to tell them, the Archbishop has banned politicians from speaking in the churches. Let us uh, observe. It is, it is said it is going to be our way of doing things. Right. Still yeah. looking at the politics and we're going towards, you know, a very tight year. Um, and looking at these, this, this ban that you've made, talking about the sentiments which you've made very public and have not been shy about them at all. Then one must ask, what then is the role that church plays in politics moving forward? Is there one? Should it be clear? And what is that? Um, I, I think let us uh, uh, try to give uh, an understanding. Let mm. me try to attempt an understanding of what I understand politics to be. Mm. Uh, politics to me is a public administration of, 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 of people's lives uh, through uh, leaders who are elected to be able to offer service to the people mm -hmm. by managing their resources, by ensuring that there is a development uh, uh, in various respect, uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, area of education, ensure we have drugs in hospitals. Uh, and, and these are people entrusted by the people who uh, in our country, most of them are Christians, and the electorate are people who come to our churches. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the ones who will get sick. Uh, 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 they are the ones who will need a hospital, um, uh, uh, actually, um, uh, attention. They will need education and accessible education. And, 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 and therefore, we cannot, as church, say we will be mum and not commend and not give uh, direction when we see things are not adding up and they are not right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and therefore, the church should continue to give uh, direction as a moral guide. It is, not, it is not instruction, it is direction that the church gives. We raise our voices, and this is biblical. Uh, Ezekiel, uh, actually, in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet was told, you know, you are the watchman. Mm. Uh, and if uh, danger loom over a city and you don't sound the alarm and people perish, uh, their blood will be upon your head. Mm. But uh, if, if danger loom over a city and then you make your noise, even if they don't heed it, then uh, if they perish, then their blood will be on their own heads and then you save yourself. So what the church is doing is to play the role of watchman. When things are not working up, it is the role of the church to say it is not uh, adding up. When things are, are good, we, we, we make comments and affirmation and say uh, uh, the, the government or the leaders or the political leadership has done, has done us proud. So, so you cannot expect the church to keep quiet mm. when uh, money, for example, is stolen that should have bought drugs. Right. We, the church cannot keep quiet when uh, uh, a mismanagement of resources uh, is happening to the extent that, uh, you know, many families are not uh, accessible to quality education because a few people uh, are the only ones who uh, are able to access because we have made it very high. Mm. When a country is food insecure, and it is because uh, the cost of production of fertilizers and other things and fuel has gone high. And then when farmers are about to harvest, the very leaders actually who are supposed to, 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 to support those farmers to earn a living out of that farming mm. will uh, actually import uh, 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 that very food which are about to harvest and flood the market. And they are the ones who will be paid and not the farmers. So the farmer will release their maize to uh, a National Citizens and Produce Board and they are not going to get their money because the politicians have, have brought their, um, their, their maize, which is imported, yeah. and flooded that market, and then uh, people have, uh, are hungry. So how can <laughs> the church be quiet? And it is my Christians who are, who are going through the same suffering. That's sure. very true. Archbishop, you are the leader of the Anglican Church of Kenya, and that is a big yeah. church, but also you are influential in the leadership of Christians and, in fact, religion in the country. Now, how are you using your position to also impact and talk to other leaders of the other denominations and also other religions so that this can be a harmonized voice. So you're not yes. just dealing with the Anglican church, but all Christian churches in Kenya. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, let me tell you that uh, we have very strong Christian bodies that bring us together, not only Christian, but also uh, interfaith. We have the National Interface Council, uh, which bring uh, Christian, Muslims, and Hindus and uh, other faiths together so that uh, 
matters to do with the people of faith or people who are, uh, have faith, uh, we address it together and address the plight of the people together and even the stability of our nation together. And we have been meeting uh, for prayers. Uh, we also have the, the, the uh, dialogue reference group, uh, which we call DRG, which uh, brings again uh, different uh, faith and different groups together uh, uh, so that we can be able to articulate position. But uh, we also have uh, uh, the National Council of Churches. We have the Evangelical Alliance uh, of Kenya, uh, which are, 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 are bodies that brings different denominations together, one for accountability, uh, uh, two for us to be able to learn and share together. Mm. Uh, the Catholic have KCCB, and, and many a times is when we gather ourselves around each other uh, just to say where is the country going. And we have made these statements in Ufongamano. Mm. Uh, we have uh, made these statements jointly. Uh, remember, to, to, uh, the, before 2016, uh, we brokered uh, the, uh, the, the, the statement that was there of formation of IEBC yep. uh, and even accompany the country until we, we got the IEBC properly constituted, the, the, the Chebugati led the IEBC mm. that managed the 2017 election. Mm. So, so the church has always been in the forefront, and I, as the Anglican Church of Kenya head, is among uh, a team of those uh, head of churches leaders. We, we also do a lot of um, quiet uh, diplomacy, visiting uh, our key political players, and especially those whom we feel have a big stake in terms of maintaining the harmony of the country. Yeah. Uh, we have not made it in public, but uh, we have been uh, you know, asking those hard questions. How will it look like if you are to lead a country that uh, is coming uh, out of bloodshed. That's uh, true. How do we want to lead a country that uh, whose economy is failing? Mm. Uh, how do you expect to lead a country where a majority are getting poorer? So, so, so we we are making these uh, uh, inroads, and, uh, uh, and you have we, your we work, are not going to relent. You have your work cut out we, for we you, Archbishop. Yes, we may not have succeeded so far, but mm. uh, I know we are in a path. And one day, Kenyans will remember mm. that there is a church that has been giving direction and yeah. giving the guidance. And people will come to appreciate. Archbishop Jackson Olesa Pete, thank you very much for speaking to us today. We wish you a lovely day. Thank, thank you very thank much. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God yeah. bless you too. Aye. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.